Hello friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel where I share great ideas. In the last uh, great idea I showed you was uh, making these uh, uh, sanders, mandrels, uh, to use in your wood turning. That can be used in all sorts of things, but uh, today we need to make a, a handle to fit those in. And uh, I think here's my handle that I've made before and that just uh, pops in there and then it spins. So what do you need to have? Well first of all you need uh, some elbows and you pick those up at any uh, building supply there. You get three quarter inch. Uh, a friend of mine picked some up uh, so I could make them some. I got three of them here. <laughs> one for me, one for him, one for another friend. So. Anyway, and then you need a doll of wood. Now, of course, you got a wood lay, so you can uh, lay the doll of wood down. I just happened to pick this piece up. I had been lathing uh, a little tiny project on the end of it. And I thought, hey, that's great. You want something that's quite hard. Uh, this is rosewood. I wouldn't recommend anything that hard. It uh, was a little bit hard to uh, drill with the Forester bit there, but uh, anyway. And then you need some uh, you need some little bearings, and uh, the best place to buy those, as far as I know, I live up way in the north. Uh, we don't have any stores close to us. In fact, the Home Depot is 300 miles away. But anyway, which is a good thing. And uh, Amazon. I just looked them up on Amazon. The first ones that I bought for the one that I made here were metric size and it was six millimeter in size, which is a hair smaller than a quarter. But when we made uh, uh, these uh, on the video, we just used the quarter inch uh, uh, carriage bolt there on those. These to fit mine, I had to shave the outside edges down a little bit to get it to slide in. Another thing I'll mention too, when we put these together, we use that uh, self-locking nylock nut on there and that comes down and it's squished in to hold the nylon in there. And that's very important because then that matches up with the inside uh, race of the bearing. So you're not uh, pushing on or wrecking any of the, the rest of the bearing there. So it's very important to use the uh, nylock bearings on there. You don't have to modify anything to make it work good. Okay, so uh, then you need a Forester bit, of course. I tried the first ones I did, I tried with a regular bit and they wander and it was way, way too big. But these have the little cutters on the side there and it, they're fairly accurate. Um, and then you need a, uh, just a drill bit that's bigger than the shaft to uh, drill through the center. So I've already made some of these up here. I've uh, bored in on the ends with the 5 8 Forester bit. Then through the center with that uh, other, with the one that's larger. And uh, you got to lay these to fit. Now, because they're slightly tapered in the inside. So I made them and then I sanded and filed a little bit uh, so it would slide in there and be tight the whole way. So that's important to do. You measure, you got two things to measure. One of course is the, is the, is the height for that and make it a little bit less. And uh, you can measure the inside here when you're making it. It, it can only go in so far because it's got a, a little lip on the inside there, which makes it nice and you can only push it in so far. And then you can use some, if you get a little bit loose, you could use some glue or something like that. But it'd be nice not to do that because then you, if you work it right, you can, uh, you can get the bearing, the whole unit out if you have to replace the bearings or you can just bang it, drill it, whatever, and uh, put a new bearing in there. 
And probably the bearing that would wear out would be the front one, so you could pop that out and, uh, and just put one bearing in there. Maybe the last, the outer one wouldn't wear out as quickly there. I suspect they would. I've never worn them out because I haven't used the bearing there. So, uh, yeah, and then of course you have to make a wood handle for that. Now, I've, in this video too, a little later, if you, I'm going to make some other ones that are like this with a metal handle with a little unit on the end there. And uh, my idea of making this was to go inside of a deep turning, like a hollow turning in that. And I've used it a bit there. I even got another one that's even longer, and I put one on one end and one on the other end. But uh, so. So now it's just assembly time, and if you use the Forrester bit, these things will just, uh, you can push them in with your finger. And that would probably be okay. That one's, that one's a nice and tight, which is nice, good there. I guess we could use a hammer. If they fit tight like that, that'd be okay. I don't, I, if you've done a good job with the Forrester bit and it hasn't wandered off, you do your Forrester bit hole before you do the center one too, because otherwise you lose your center there. And you can just mark those by eye. Okay, so I think that fits through there. Good. Um, what I've done on uh, some of my other ones is I just took, uh, crazy glue, put a little bit in the hole uh, or on the bearing before I pushed it in and then put a little bit of crazy glue around the outside there. But I'm kind of impressed with how this one went together and uh, maybe I won't do that. And then it's just a matter of finding which way is that you had it tight there. And there, there we go. Had to push it in there, and uh, you could use a little glue around there, whatever, but I think that'll be good. Now we just need to make a handle for that, but that's, that's all there is to that. Uh, the bearings, I forgot to mention about the bearings. These are 5 eighths outside diameter, 1 quarter inch inside diameter, and uh, they're fairly easy to come by. If you just you can even search for that size of bearing. Yeah, that... Uh, fits good. The first one I did on mine, I don't know, I got it, didn't quite go in straight, but you want some really hard wood. I don't recommend the rosewood, it's just too hard for the thing there, but uh, end grain of, a, of another type of hardwood, closed grain, make a good unit. Okay, well that was easy. I made uh, three of these pieces while I was doing it because I had three pieces there but I, I cracked when I was drilling it it was so hard I uh, I broke the I broke the first one I did so I was more careful on the other ones there so these will stick out a little bit uh, which is okay but that'll give you the full length of whatever's left on that and uh, that's all there is to it. Okay, so anyway, um, we'll talk about the uh, metal ones here in the next uh, segment here. Okay, we were going to uh, give you some information on these other ones that I made with the long handles on. I just showed them to you briefly, but uh, I wanted something that goes inside a hollow turning there, as I've mentioned. And uh, so I, I come up with this idea of putting them on at these uh, pieces of tubing. Now, you could use conduit or something like that. Uh, there's lots of different types of uh, tubings around. And uh, then they have to be welded on uh, another piece. Now, this was, uh, these are 5 eighths. This was uh, 3 quarter. And uh, uh, two different sizes. So you need... You could use a, a bigger size here, and uh, the same size as this here, so you only had to buy one piece of tubing, but I just had this left over. It was uh, uh, 
4130 from a friend that was building an airplane. So there were ends and pieces that he left, gave me. So I had a bunch of that. And uh, so you could use the metal. And uh, then I got to thinking about it, you know. A lot of people don't have a welder and they get, uh, they don't want to go to the welding shop to get a, a 10 second job done, just tack that on there. But if you have friends, uh, go that way. And then I thought, well, uh, here's something that you could probably do in the shop. Uh, a lot of you have soldering equipment or things like that. So I thought, well, I'll try one out of a piece of uh, copper pipe from a copper water plumbing thing. And you could probably go to the plumbing place and they'd give you some short pieces of this. This is uh, three quarter inch because you need at least a three quarter inch pipe where you put the the bearing in there. So then I just used the propane torch and very carefully uh, soldered one side and cooled it right off. And I did this on metal, a piece of metal, so there'd be a good heat uh, sink to it. And then when I turned it over, the, uh, put that against the metal and then use a fair amount of heat. You want to heat it as quick as you can at the top there. And then, uh, and then solder it. And this was the first side that I did there. Turned out pretty good. Got a little bit rushed on the second side because I didn't want to heat it up and then melt the first side out, but it worked okay. So I was quite happy with that. And uh, made it long enough so you can hold it. Uh, these ones with uh, long handle are good. Put it about 45 degrees. And uh, then I did the same process to make the little bearing set up there. It only took a few minutes and uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, putting it putting it in there. There we go. Now that's a little loose. I can move it there. So what you could do there is use a little glue, uh, crazy glue when you put it in there and uh, because with these fittings uh, the other fittings, they have that shoulder on there. So it'd be just a matter of taking a center punch and uh, popping it on one side there. That would hold it. And uh, epoxy, glue, whatever, and it'll, you'll have a good unit there. Uh, yeah. Another thing you could do, and I've already done one, I gave it to another fella, is I didn't have... Uh, some of these available so I just took uh, I had some more I had a 45 degree copper elbow and just put that on I didn't even solder it because they, they're fairly tight fit and they just go right on so uh, yeah you can make one with the different angles on each end uh, very simply and easily just from parts you may have around the house there so for the last part of this uh, video here. Let's just talk about uh, these little things that, that I've already made here. Uh, these ones are made of the floor mat. No, that works out quite well. And uh, then I've got the ones that are made out of the kneeling pad. They're a fair amount softer. But uh, And those are for two inch discs. Now you can uh, buy the discs and I think a lot of people are doing that is uh, here they are here you can buy these little discs and you pay quite a bit of money for those uh, it comes out uh, probably 15 20 cents 25 cents each for these uh, discs here now I punched them out on uh, out of a piece of velcro sandpaper and that still costs uh, uh, I was surprised how much it costs the first ones I got were quite cheap and then the next time they doubled the price so I made this little punch out of a piece of pipe because <clears throat> I have a metal lathe that I can sharpen the edges and then I just take it on the, on here with a hammer and, and pop them out. But uh, I'm kind of cheap and I'd like to figure out a, a cheaper way to do things that's actually a lot better in the end. And uh, when I was... Uh, a while back I had bought a box of sandpaper ends. They're actually sanding belts. They come from Klingspor in Germany. 
top quality sanding belts from Stockroom Supply, you can get a 20 pound box for $60. And uh, so a friend and I went in on it uh, to uh, get one of these boxes and we were going to share it. And if you can do that, uh, you get enough sandpaper to last a lifetime, maybe two or three lifetimes. But anyway, this is half of the box. I filled up one of these totes here because they're packed into these boxes super tight. And you get all kinds of grits from very coarse to very, very fine. I think there's probably comes in 500. Like uh, here's a piece of uh, 320. It's marked right on here. But it's a nice sanding belt. Uh, this is probably 8, 10 feet long. Just a huge piece. And uh, there's, uh, this is more like 120 or so. And uh, different grits. And of course you'll get some coarse stuff too. But even that's uh, useful on different things. And you can take these things and just tear sections off. Tear squares there are squares off, whatever you want. Or I was cutting them and using them on <clears throat> the vibrator sander. And uh, that works super good too. Uh, uh, like the regular thin sandpaper will tear and you wreck it on sharp edges and stuff. But uh, put a piece of this on your vibrator sander, you can sand over edges and all sorts of things. And, uh, if you have a belt sander or a disc sander, of course, that's the type of paper that's going to be on there. It's not paper, it's actually cloth. It's super strong. You obviously know that uh, you, you probably have one of these uh, sticks for cleaning those uh, belts and discs. <coughs> so, uh, this one's on the, I put this one on the drill and it's got all kinds of stuff on it there. But if you just take it on there, and uh, pretty soon it's back to where it's new and you just keep going. And uh, so it'll outlast the regular expensive paper discs that's uh, Velcro backed. But uh, <clears throat> when I got this, I didn't have uh, a clue that I was going to be using them for these uh, discs and that. But, uh, so how was I going to attach it? Well, I thought of several different things. I even bought some spray stick stuff that you can use and it probably would work. And then I thought, well, I'll try double-sided tape. And I went on Amazon and I bought a, a roll of uh, super sticky stuff. Uh, and it's super sticky. And it will, once you put that on there, uh, it doesn't come off. You don't have to ever worry about it flipping off like you do the Velcro, wrecking your Velcro and causing all sorts of problems there. Uh, so the... <clears throat> and then a friend of mine, he was going to get in and do that too. And he took the name of mine down, but the only trouble he ordered... Uh, some that wasn't near as sticky. You see the the difference in the size of rolls there. They both have 90 yards on there. No, 30 yards. So you got 90 feet. Uh, this one cost about 12 bucks Canadian. The other one was about 18. Uh, I didn't think this would work, but I've tried it out and it works. It does does real well, and it's easier to get on and get off once you got it on there. But. Uh, and it doesn't have the fabric in there, and it's not as sticky. It's just a, a clear glue film. And uh, <clears throat> I'll be trying that more, and uh, it, it looks like it's... But to get this off, uh, this super sticky stuff, you just have to heat it up. And you have to be a little careful when you're sanding. If you get it too hot, it, it, it'll, it'll get loose. But, uh, and... Uh, you can see it just pulling right off there, but it'll come off once it's hot. And uh, there we go. See? That's all there is to it. And of course, I could just stick that back on and it'd be just super good. But what I do is, here's one here. If you're in the, if you had a thing, I'd pop these things out and I have a, uh, uh, a number of them of the different grits and then once you're ready to uh, put it on 
Now you can see that one is the super sticky one. It's, it's uh, opaque there because it's thicker with glue and, uh, and there. And then if you have those ready, then you just go along and pop a new one on. And uh, that one's ready to, ready to use right there. You don't have to wait for the glue to dry or anything. Um, now here's a smaller one that I made, like a one inch, just a little bigger than that washer. The idea for that was to get into a, a smaller hole. If you, wanted to, if you had a, a turning where the hole was relatively small, you go right inside there with that one there, and it works quite well too. Of course, I don't have a punch for that, and uh, so it it works just as good. In fact, not a little better. Just uh, chop off a piece and a square piece. Same with the the, the double sided tape, and uh, you'll know double sided tape by carpet tape. I, so you could probably just buy it at that in Home Depot. Depot or a building supply um, in various stickiness. That'd probably be the best way to go get some. And then uh, you just chop the corners off so it's not round anymore. It's not round. But in a lot of sanding situations in bowls and stuff, to have that little extra sticking out around there is a good idea. In fact, you pay premium money to buy them like that. They've got kind of a scalloped edge all the way around. And uh, I never had one, but they're quite expensive. So, uh, yeah, get one of those boxes, share it with somebody or three people, four people, go in on a box. Uh, you just make them for pennies and you've got paper to, to use for other things as well. And they'll last forever and you can clean it. And uh, it's just, uh, I found it just fantastic uh, compared to the, expensive ones that I was using there. And mine were even cheaper than what you had because I pumped them out myself. Anyway, uh, yeah, this thing was easy to make uh, and uh, you can make any kind you want there. So that kind of concludes my uh, uh, videos on uh, making the uh, these little things. And uh, when you use that sticky stuff, and if you watch my other videos, I actually sanded that surface of those uh, things off uh, because I thought the uh, Velcro wouldn't stick to it. But this stuff is super sticky. Don't uh, uh, sand the surface off where you put these on. Uh, leave it the waffle pattern like it is there, and it's actually harder. Uh, and it'll, it'll, it sticks to that just fantastic. Because I've had, if I didn't heat these up enough in this soft stuff, if I didn't heat it up enough and go to tear it off, it actually tore the, the fabric there. And then I just took it to the disc sander and sanded it down a little farther and brought it back to new. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope this gives you some ideas and saves you lots of money and and uh, you have a great fun making some of these things. It's nice to be able to use things that you make yourself. Uh, these specialty things you just can't buy. So subscribe and I'm sure I'll have some more uh, videos and different things that, that I do here with uh, improved ideas. I call it improved ideas. <laughs> I don't know if it is or not, but anyway, we'll catch you another day. Thanks again for watching.